First up tonight is Emma Thornton from Berkshire, who, it's fair to say, is feeling more than a little nervous at the prospect of pitching her products. This is something that is completely out of my comfort zone. Um, I'm not really a, um, a showman, <laughs> but I love the industry and uh, I love my brand, so uh, hopefully that will come through. Emma's hoping her planet-friendly business will strike a chord with the dragons. I have a huge passion for everything that's organic, uh, both from an environmental perspective, but also what it can do for our bodies. Essential oils of some sort? I think it looks like oils. But will Emma's offering have what it takes to win an investment? Hi, my name is Emma Thornton and I'm the founder and owner of True Skincare. I'm here today seeking £75,000 in exchange for 5% equity in my business. My background has been centred around the premium beauty industry. It was this experience which gave me an insight into how much it actually cost to make these products and how much water was going into them. Everything within the True Skincare range is certified organic, vegan friendly, natural, made in the UK, Leaping Bunny approved by Cruelty Free International and waterless in formulation. At present, we have six core products on the market, which range from £12 to £17. The range quickly launched with Holland and Barrett in May 2018, followed by Ocado, Birchbox and Boots Online. The brand is now in prime position to expand and I'd love to have a dragon join me on this journey. Waterless skincare is the organic offering from Emma Thornton. I source all of the ingredients and all of the packaging myself, so I know exactly where it's coming from. She's looking for £75,000 in return for a 5% share in her company. First to question the eco-entrepreneur is the den's very own green queen, Deborah Meaden. So, first of all, congratulations on covering all of the angles in terms of water <laughs> and making it available to the general market, because that is a real bugbear of mine. Saving the planet shouldn't cost the earth. So what's your credentials to be able to formulate and come up with these products? Sure, so I used to lead the marketing uh, for some quite well-known brands, so I've worked for Elemis, Gino, and then my last role was with a brand called QMS Medi Cosmetics. How much have you turned over from your start? So first year was um, 27,000, um, then 85 last year, and then this year we're on track to do 250,000 in turnover. Emma's revelation that her company has grown year on year has made a good first impression on Deborah Meaden. And at less than £20 a pop, Sarah Davies wants to delve deeper into the cost of these cosmetics. Emma. Hi. Great product. Thank you. <laughs> the packaging, the branding, the user experience is fantastic. Thank you. But my concern, and I'm hoping you can massively alleviate it because you are a marketing specialist, <laughs> is that the price point feels so cheap that would put me off as a consumer. I would assume that the product must be inferior. I would find it really difficult to jump from the price I spend on this sort of product to jump to this price. Or is that not the consumer you're trying to get, the people who usually spend a lot of money on there? I think with the COVID situation, a lot of people are looking to switch over to more affordable skincare. People are starting to look at ways that they can adjust to their new budgets. Um, but also, as soon as people try the product, they absolutely love it. Um, I don't necessarily agree with Sarah about the product being a low price. Brands like Boots have disrupted the market with serums, anti-aging products at very low prices, Protect and Perfect, some of those brands, and they've gone mass market. So I do think there's a market for it. Have Boots indicated that if the rate of sale is good online, will they put it in store? Uh, that is the intention, yes. Who else would you want to target to get into? In the UK, Marks and Spencers. Uh, Waitrose, Superdrug. The price point is very good for Superdrug. Yeah. Your product does feel very luxurious and the consumer would feel they're getting really good value for money. Praise for Emma from healthcare boss Tejal Alvani, who appears to share her vision for the business's strategy for growth. Will retail giant Tuka Suleiman see a beautiful future for the skincare entrepreneur? So to round up, you're organic? Yes. Waterless? Yes. Well-priced. Yes. And you're ambitious. 
Yeah. How's that? Yes, perfect. Right? And <laughs> yeah, you should be my salesperson. <laughs> I should be your salesperson. Look, I have to be totally honest. I disagree with where you're positioned. I think you might be too expensive. Because not everybody has got the buying power that Sarah here has got <laughs> buying the big brands. And to me, there's two ways to make money. You either put your stake and say, we are a luxury brand, mm -hmm. or we're going to cater for a wider consumer, make it more accessible to those kids who haven't got 50 pounds to spend on, on a serum, but they've got 10 pounds or eight pounds. But I think you're bang in the middle and you will struggle. For that reason, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman takes issue with the product's price point and becomes the first dragon out. Can skincare savvy Tej Lalvani pour oil on the troubled waters of Emma's pitch? Emma, what is your net profit on the £250,000 that you anticipate this year? And what was it last year? So we're looking at a profit of 10000 this year. Um, last year, we made a loss of about 40000 And are you m managing to take a salary and yes. a living? How much are you taking at the um, moment? I take 30000 including that. 30k a year. Because the only thing I'd say, Emma, is to grow the business, even if you were to go to four to 500000 you'd mm -hmm. generate probably about 100000 in net profit, and you're still paying yourself 30000 a year. But when you grow this business, you're going to have to bring in another couple of people. Mm -hmm. And we've experienced it recently with Hannah Silito. It's yes. Uh, yeah, so on skincare investment that I've got with Tej. You think you're going to make more money, but those costs just get absorbed. Yeah. But that's not a bad thing, because you're looking for returns in years three, four, five, and you're growing a business. Yes. Any of you tried the product? Yeah, it's lovely. Really like it. No, I think what you've done is really great. And I think the potential for such a brand is definitely out there to build this really global. I think there's a lot of value I can add here. So I've got a great relationship with Superdrug. I know you want to get in there. So I am going to make you an offer. I'm willing to offer you all the money for 20%. But since I've also got the same business, Halasilito, with Peter, and we've grown that very well, I'm happy to share with Peter 10% <clears throat> for half the money. Thank you very much. Really interesting complementary set of skills you get with Tej and I. So my offer would be the same. It's a share. Mm -hmm. So you'd end up with two dragons for 75,000 for 20%. OK, thank you very much. Tej Lalvani and Peter Jones combine forces to propose a double dragon deal. But for four times the equity, the entrepreneur was willing to give away. But Deborah Meaden clearly has a feel for Emma's products, and it appears she's not going to let the dragons to her left have it all their own way. I think you present this brand perfectly. You talk about it with heart. So I'm going to make you an offer. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, and I'm going to make it competitive <laughs> for these two guys. I want 15% of the business. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. Emma. Hi. The thing I believe that I can help you with, which nobody else here will be able to, is how do you tell your story out there to a consumer who is right at this price point through the TV shopping channels globally, you are perfectly primed to achieve that with. So for that reason, I would also be prepared to offer you all of the money for 15% of the business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you mind if I... Yeah, please walk? take your time. <laughs> Zara Davies matches Deborah Meaden's offer of the £75,000 Emma is seeking for 15%, throwing in her TV shopping expertise as part of the deal. With Tej Lalvani and Peter Jones wanting to split a 20% chunk of her business, all three offers are a long way from the 5% slice Emma wanted to give away. 
I really appreciate all of your offers, but is there any chance that any of you could go any lower? So what are you looking for? I would really need it to be as close to 5% as possible. Um... Honestly, from, from my perspective, I'm going to stick with where I'm at. I understand what you're trying to do, and I'd be willing to drop my half down to 7.5%, so it'll be 15%. But only if Tej would be happy with that. Yeah, but I'm willing to, to match what Peter said and you've got both of us to help you in the different areas that we can add value. I really appreciate it. Um... <sighs> I will improve my offer. It isn't going to match your, what you're asking for, but I would love to go on this journey with you, so I am prepared to... Um, reconsider my offer and offer you all of the money for 12.5%. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate um, all of your help. Deborah, I would love to accept your offer, if that's OK. Whoa! Wow. Good! <laughs> Whoa, well done. Good. I am so pleased. Me too. Yeah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes. thank you. It's Deborah Meaden who triumphs in the den as she lands a 12.5% stake in this organic skincare company. And Emma walks away with the £75,000 she was looking for. Deborah, that's a great investment. She's yep. a good girl. I that's really a great business. Like it. I'm over the moon to have Deborah on board. She just completely got what I was trying to achieve. I just felt like we were on the same wavelength. It was the pleasure yeah. of investing in something great. It was, And also exactly. taking us down. Yeah. And taking you yes, down, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what we'll we'll enjoy it. Let's see if we can get all five dragons. I like you thinking. At the heart of their company is a philanthropic ethos that puts compassion before cash. I don't think we could really believe in a business that just puts profit as its focus. But will their altruistic approach rouse or repel the profit-hungry investors? The idea of walking in to see the dragons is definitely scary, but I think if you keep thinking about why it is that we're doing it, this, the nerves sort of pitter away a little bit. Hopefully we'll get the investment that we need. Yeah. Hi, dragons. My name's Johnny. And I'm Antonia. And we are the co-founders of a skincare brand called Nursum. Uh, we're here today to pitch for £75,000 in return for 1.5% equity. The idea behind Nursum happened a number of years ago when I was working as a busy paediatric nurse. On average, I'd be washing my hands around 50 to 60 times a day. It was during this time that my hands became cracked dry and at times bled and actually led to me taking two weeks off work in order for them to recover. Whilst Antonio was off work, we discovered there was a real lack in the marketplace for a natural yet effective product targeted towards people with hard-working hands. So working with some expert cosmetic laboratories, this is the range that we've developed and is available today. Nursum is available in Boots, Lloyd's Pharmacies and many other prominent UK retailers. But not wanting to lose sight of the reason that we set up Nursum in the first place, we created what's called the Nursum Promise. And for every product we sell at retail, we then provide a month's worth of free hand care back to a nurse, midwife or other healthcare professional in the NHS. And it would be an absolute honour for a dragon or dragons to join us on this journey. A benevolent pitch from Johnny and Antonia Philp, who've put the needs of NHS workers at the core of their concept. This hand wash was designed using really gentle, ultra-mild cleansers. They're asking for £75,000 in exchange for 1.5% of their skincare range. Good for the face? You can use it well, on your I face. Well, I need it, of course. You must use baby cream already. You have a face like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah Meaden is first to question the hand cream hopeful. So, it sounds like already a success story. And this was all pre-COVID that you set this up. Yes. It was, it was, yeah. But COVID has definitely accelerated the business enormously. OK. Um, I'm going to home straight in on your valuation. 
75,000 for 1.5% of the business. Sounds quite racy. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to give me some pretty good numbers to back that up. So last year's uh, turnover for 2019 was 142,000 uh, with a loss of 18,000. Year to date so far, we've turned over 800,000 with a net of 200,000. And our full year forecast for the whole of 2020 is 1.5 million with a net of 312. Do you know, I'm very pleased to hear that. Too often I sit here and people come up with crazy valuations and then they tell you that all this stuff is going to happen in the future. Yeah. yeah. But that's the future. But right here, you've got a very clear demonstration of, of pretty stratospheric growth. Yeah. Spectacular sales have helped support the company's £5 million valuation, usually a red rag to a dragon. But Tuka Suleiman has concerns about the long-term prospects of the business. For me, call it what you want, at the end of the day, it's a hand cream. You've got that little bit of what I call COVID magic going in your, in your favour. But without the COVID, where would this business balance out at? I don't think the way that people view hand washing will change anytime soon. Not, not just the UK, but internationally as well. I think Nursum's a perfectly positioned brand to be able to help as many people as possible who are in need of our products. You're good. <laughs> Thank you, too. Your numbers are good, your presentation, you've got all the answers to all the questions. Bang, 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 bang. It's very rare. Yeah. <laughs> so what exactly are you guys looking for? Apart from the money, of course. The first point is we've never built a business of this size, ultimately trying to build it sort of 40, 50 million value. We really need someone who's done that before. And then the second thing is international. And I think that's something that, that you guys can help with. Guys, can I ask what your plans are for the future? What's your end game? I think, um, well, first and foremost, I think I'll always want to be a nurse. That's in me, it's a vocation. Um, a big thing is that population that we're serving, and that's mostly healthcare professionals, they give so much to so many people. The late shifts that you put in, the times when you probably don't rush back to your family and stay with your patient. We just want to be able to continue to give a bit of a pat on the back and a bit of, well done, like, you're amazing. I love that answer because it, it's a business with heart. You know, it, yeah. it means something to you. I love that. Johnny and Antonia's acumen and ethos is proving to be a potent formula in the den. But has their charitable charm won over Peter Jones? You have got it easy at the moment on valuation. You have achieved a miracle starting a business and getting it to its point. And now you could be in a position where you go, oh, if I continue on this growth phase, I'm going to have a business that's going to be worth 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. The journey to get from what I would class as where you are at point two of a 10 step journey, if you haven't got the experience of doing it, it should be terrifying you right now. Yeah. That's the bit that I really am concerned about. Then I go back to valuation. I think your value at the moment, um, from my perspective, is, is, is really sharp. So the only way I can change a valuation is by giving you an offer. So I'm going to do that. OK. <laughs> I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 10% of the company. OK. OK, thank you, Peter. An offer from Peter Jones, whose concerns over the company's valuation have compelled him to ask for a much bigger slice of the business than the 1.5% originally presented. There's a lot of love in the room at the moment, but will those positive vibes become cash offers? We're all interested, I, I can sense it, because it's all gone quiet. So I think each one of us, as dragons, are now going to parade ourselves and tell you what we can each do for you. I'm coming with a whole package. I have got 54 distributors around the world, probably in every corner of the planet you could imagine. We can open any door in the UK, Tesco, Asda, Green Boots, we're everywhere. So are they. 
Sorry? So are they. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. What you're saying is you're able to open a door for them, they've already no, opened. No, I'm, I'm just saying it's the distribution part which could catapult your business. So what I'm offering is £100,000 for 10%. OK, thanks. Thanks, Tuka. Thank you. Tuka Suleiman asks for the same 10% share of equity as Peter Jones. But by upping the cash offer to £100,000, it's a more attractive valuation of the business. Does Sarah Davies have anything up her sleeve that can pique the entrepreneur's interest? Honestly, I think your biggest potential here is the US market. Mm -hmm. And that's a journey that I've been on personally. And I think that's something that I could really help and support with. And honestly, I think that's where you need the help and support more than here in the UK, because you seem to have everything sorted out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would like to make you an offer. And I would like to offer all of the money for 8% of the business. OK, okay thank thanks, you. Sarah. Her US connections, combined with a smaller 8% equity demand, put Sarah Davies firmly in the fight to form an alliance with the skincare business. Only Deborah Meaden and healthcare heavyweight Tej Lalvani have yet to show their hands. Will they make it a clean sweep of offers? I love it, and I don't know what there is to not love about you. And I love you and this enough to make you a very racy offer. So I'm going to offer you all of the money, but I want 5% of the business. OK. OK, thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Tony and Johnny. Hi. Hi. Oh. Well, look, I'm really excited about this, especially you two, and especially what you're standing for in terms of creating a product with a real health benefit. And I think the way you've aligned yourself in terms of the, the NHS and the nurses providing that, you know, there's a lot of synergies in terms of what I'm doing with brands that I have. And I think I can really make this explode. So I'm going to make you a very compelling offer as well. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 5%. OK, thanks, thank Tej. Deborah Meaden and Tej Lalvani swoop in with matching undercutting bids of 5%, making up a full house of offers. But have Johnny and Antonia already made up their minds about who they'd like as their partner in Cream? Can I just go back to you, Peter? It was all of the money for 10%. Yeah. Would you consider matching Deborah and Tasia's offer. If I did, would we have a dividend policy that would allow me to get my money back? That was one of the things that I'd like to come on to actually next. Yeah. Would you be willing to come back down to 3% once you've had your initial investment paid back? He's got a lot. He's got to come from 10% to 5% to head to back to do it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we're asking You're for good. a... We're asking for a lot here. I'd say yes. OK. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Can we... Can we... You haven't asked us if we're... I'm assuming you're not interested in us. Well, if you guys are happy to match what's on the table and... Well, I, I mean, I, I feel a little bit left out that I haven't been asked. Oh. I match no, you? sorry, sorry, you took it. <laughs> Look, I think, um, yeah, I'll match. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. I'd be uh, happy to go with that. Yeah, look, I mean, it is important to choose who you think is going to be the right partner long term. And uh, I'd like to work with you guys. So, um, you know, I'd be happy to do that. OK, thank, thank you. Thank you. I think this stopped being just a business conversation about 10 minutes ago, didn't it? <laughs> it started being about what's the right thing to do and how can any one of us support you on the journey that you're on that we clearly all believe in. So you've got five equal offers and you go and choose the dragon that's right for you. OK. Thank you, sir. Right. You need to go and talk to the wall. We do need to talk to the wall. <laughs> it might Thank be a you. while. <laughs> <clears throat> the entrepreneurs clean up as the equity demands tumble down.
75,000 at 5%. What does that work out as? With all five dragons now deadlocked at 5%, going down to 3% once they get their money back. I just think, especially from a like, international distribution yeah. perspective. I, I think you're right. Having the creme de la creme of investors vie for your business may be an enviable position, but it poses a dilemma. Okay, that's just... Whew. Sorry. Just checking my maths there. GCSE <laughs> maths wasn't the best. <laughs> OK, um, so before we even say this, we just want to thank you all, cos I know, like, we all owe you, like, a massive amount of respect. But, um... We've decided to accept your offer. Yes! What? Great stuff, guys. High five in the air. <laughs> High five. <laughs> Tej Lalvani is the cat that got the cream as he partners up with Johnny and Antonia, who secure the £70,000 they were asking for, having negotiated one of the most impressive equity climb downs in Dragon's Den history. Blimey, that's really hard. He was quite wow. clever there. What was the point in asking me to go down? That was a hustle, wasn't it? <laughs> Seeing the likes of Peter and Deborah, your natural inclination is to want to take their offers because they're the ones that you know the best. But we did our homework before we went in and we knew all about Tasia's business. And I think he's precisely the kind of person to help move us forward for the next few years. Next to enter the den, a South African expat, James Inglesby, and his business partner and fiance, Venezuelan-born Diana Ziegler, with a range of items they believe are both luxuriously appealing and planet-friendly. Our product is very great because we created something that is not only sustainable, but it actually works. Drink or apply? Apply. Apply. Apply, apply. it's got yeah. a pump on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not really good, though, if we have to sit here working out if it's a drink or something you apply. While the dragons wrestle with what the product range actually is, James is more concerned about being stumped himself. My biggest fear is that they find some strange number that I don't know and just throw me off. Or I forget, <laughs> yeah. We are feeling very nervous. <laughs> Good afternoon, Dragons. I'm James. And hi, I'm Diana. We are the founders of Nereus London. Today, we're here to ask the Dragons for £50,000 for a 10% share of our business. We create a truly luxurious spa experience using premium shampoos, body washes and conditioners. Best of all, they're genuinely sustainable and plastic free. Like many millennials, we are taking more conscious purchase in or in... <laughs> what, and what Diane and I dis discovered during this journey of trying to find more conscious purchase ideas was that the average UK household uses about 216 plastic bottles a year. So, okay, you're here. <laughs> um, there must be a better way to do this. Oh. Yes, so we set out to develop and formulate our own products. They had to be clean beauty. And of course, yeah, no. <laughs> they had to work on Diana's hair. And oh gosh! Come on, Diana, get with the program. <laughs> oh, to be fair, you're in a second language, aren't you, Diana? As well. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> after all of this, we have amazing reviews from loyal customers. To date, we've sold over three thousand units. At the turnover about thirty-five thousand pounds. So we would love for one of you dragons, or all of you dragons, <laughs> to be part of this uh, journey to sustainability and premium hair and body care. On the gift boxes, you will find the hand gel and the hair and conditioner shampoo. There may have been some nerves on show, but James Inglesby and Diana Ziegler finished their pitch. Well done, you got through it. It, <laughs> it, it came back. A, a little bit, but it came back. No, that's good. They're seeking a £50,000 investment for a 10% stake in their business. Peter Jones is the first to question the toiletries twosome. You've come up with a range of hair premium body beauty products. Yeah. What's your background? I used to work for Unilever and I've been formulating and creating 
deodorants, toothpaste, all sorts of bits and pieces. My real strength is product development. I do that now as a consulting job. I also do that for some other brands. They're fantastic. Yeah. Okay, and tell me about the story behind, because I picked out of the box yeah. your products, and yeah. some of them look good. This looks like a little bit of a shambles. Yeah. What's behind that? So we wanted to take all the plastic away from our products. Um, this label is made of wool pulp, so you're going to start disintegrating, and you can put it on the compost, and it will just eat away. They end yeah. up like this? They end up like that, yes. You start off like that, and then over time, they start breaking down. So if you open our boxes, they'll see like a warning card telling people that this is something that is naturally going to happen. And how long does it take to get to that state? Because it turns up looking lovely. Yeah, yeah. It takes, what, three, four weeks, maybe longer? I personally wouldn't mind it, but I know there are other dragons who would mind it. But to be honest, some of my other labels go a bit dodgy. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I just want it to look lovely when I get it. But it's not particularly aesthetically pleasing it ends up like that. I'm not sure people will appreciate the fact that yeah. they're buying a product that ends up like this. Our customers seem to like it. We've had over 360 orders on Amazon and we've only had three returns. The entrepreneurs may be embracing sustainability, but their eco-friendly labels are proving divisive. Will the positive vibes from the den's most ardent environmentalist mean she's also inclined to green light their branding? I think they look beautiful. Your packaging looks great because I'm fed up with receiving um, organic, sustainable products in plain brown packaging. Everybody's gone for the look at us. We don't even use ink. Yeah. Um, so I like that bit at the bad side of it. If it's sat on a shelf somewhere, I don't even know if you're, you're a whiskey. Our customers actually like the boxes so much because those are made from recycled corrugate. They're, they're corrugate, no, right? No, they're beautiful. I can imagine a customer getting that and thinking that is lovely, but th that is a very different experience to having that on a retail shelf. There is nothing on the outside of your packaging that tells me what it is. Deborah Meaden deems the entrepreneur's marketing minimalism a wasted opportunity to broadcast their brand. Now, Stephen Bartlett wants to put the spotlight on the pair's projections. In terms of your growth going forward then, year over year, so what are you forecasting? Yeah, so we're doubling very quickly. We plan to do 250,000 uh, pounds year one, and then year two, 500, um, year three. We're, we're gonna get up to year five where we wanna be doing six million. So year one, what's the gross? I'd say 55%. The number? Oh, the actual yeah. number for year one. Whew, that's a good number to ask me. Off the top of my head, uh, so it would be uh, minus 20% of... Um, so it's going to be £125,000 profit. And then net is going to be minus... Two, two, uh, minus... Uh, 50. 50, yeah. I feel like you're not very confident with these numbers. No, no, I, I know the percentages, the overall numbers are a, a bit more of a, a difficult one. You can admit, you can say, I don't know my numbers, because if I interrogate the strategy that's going to make those numbers come true, I, I feel like you'll get yourself tied up in a, a little web of nonsense. Yeah, sorry about that. So it starts 250 for our year one, 500, 750, uh, a million, and then it'll go to year five, six would be six million, um, five million, sorry. Mm. And how'd you get from one million to five million between years four and five? And I thought it was six million was going to be the turnover. I also thought you were going to double year on year, but double 500's not 750, and double 750's not a million, and double a million's not five million. And I think you know where I'm going. I have got zero confidence in any word that's coming out of your mouth, because we've had a load of cod swallop for the last few minutes. Zara Davies loses patience as James fails to nail his numbers. And it appears Peter Jones's tolerance has also been tested. I'm sitting here thinking about being polite, but I have to say, this is a shambles, frankly. At the moment, this pitch has no substance for me. I don't even know what Nureus is. I don't know really what the brand's saying. I really need to know quickly what this business is all about. Something that is quite different is that these are all custom made, so nothing that you see here has not been made by us. Each one of these fragrances has been smelt tested by Dinah. 
that's still not good enough. If I'm launching a hair product and I've got a team of people that are putting a product to the market, I would bloody well expect them to smell it before they launch it. So let's go deeper. Let's find out what this is all about. We wanted to create a brand that was all about sustainability, but it will actually perform because I have such a sensitive um, allergies to a lot of chemicals. And having those, I want to remove my lifestyle to have a more like a vegan shampoo, you know, like we tested other like natural shampoos, but they actually didn't work. Great, so I've got the journey, but how okay. am I seeing on your product what it does? How are you going to tell me, as a potential consumer, the reason why I need to buy your product? So, I, I mean, the main reason why you want to buy our product is, first of all, the fragrances and the experience that we're going to create for you. So, like, as you can see here, how we've set up all the ingredients, this whole spa experience. No, James, you haven't. You've given me a box with a product in it. Yeah. That's, there's no experience here yet. Yeah. And the brand isn't telling me what the experience could be. You have got to find a way of shortening that answer to Peter's question. Why? Why buy me? Yeah. You know, and it took you ages to do that. <laughs> and you've got to work that out. I'm afraid you haven't quite inspired me enough to think that I want to, to get involved. I'm sorry, I'm out. It's a huge blow, as a failure to succinctly sell the USP of their business makes the den's sustainable dragon, Deborah Meaden, take an early bath. And now it appears Stephen Bartlett has been visualizing a rather unexpected scenario. Um, question. I'm at home, I'm in my boxer shorts. Yeah. It's Tuesday, it's raining outside. Bit bored. Pick up my phone. Open up social media website. Scrolling down the news feed. Boom, I see you. What does it say? Create a luxury spa experience at home. OK, if you're telling me that you're framing your business as a spa experience, then I look to the product and I think, well, that's not what you're delivering for your customer. And so for that reason, I'm going to unfortunately have to say that I'm out. James, Diana, this has to say what it does on the tin if you're going to have a chance of launching a new brand. So I would say at the moment this business is totally uninvestable. So I'm out. James, you're clearly from the industry and have put the blood, sweat and tears in to get a business off the ground. My concern is you haven't demonstrated to me today that you have a solid grasp on the business and have the business acumen, therefore, to take the business to the next level. So I won't be investing in that amount. Four dragons have now washed their hands of an investment. James and Diana's last chance of a deal rests with high street heavyweight Tuka Suleiman. Could the eco-friendly brand be perfect for his portfolio? OK, retailers want sustainable brands. Yeah. They want them. And I am looking for sustainable brands because I've got a home for them. Yes, it ticks the boxes. Yeah. Um, look, guys, I, I am very tempted to make you an offer. I am tempted. You know, I could get this into three or four retailers tomorrow if it had the correct message. But I know you've gone so far with the branding. You guys have got your own agenda set up. I would want to change too much, take too much of the company, and that would be fair of you. So I'm not going to invest today, and I'm out. No, thank you so much. James, Diana, thank you. Thank no, you thank guys. you, guys. I really appreciate all the feedback. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. Tuka Suleiman keeps his pounds in his pockets, and the eco-entrepreneurs leave empty-handed. Their green credentials may have been commendable, but their toiletry concept just didn't wash with the dragons. A lot of work to do. Eh? A lot of work to do. Hearing the truth is the best thing, and we can take on all that feedback and turn it into something better, really. I hope. We hope. <laughs> <laughs>